<clears throat> Good morning to those who are joining us uh, from the Smith Cove Baptist Church this morning for the message today, this Sunday, August the 7th. It's uh, been a little bit of a challenge with different things this morning, and I guess it's appropriate that the message is about patience today. So brace yourselves. Our scripture reading, there's two that I'm sharing at the beginning of the message. I have other shorter passages to add that come from our scriptures concerning patience. So don't run away. Have a seat and listen to have what the Lord may have to say to us this morning. First reading is from Ephesians 4. I'm reading the first six verses. The Apostle Paul writes, as a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of a calling you've received. Be completely humble, gentle, be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all, through all, and in all. And then, of course, the apostle writing to the church in Colossus, writing to us today from chapter 3, verses 12 to 14. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord has forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Heavenly Father, we ask your continued blessing on your Holy Spirit's word, that you not only write the word in our minds, Lord, but it travels to our heart, our soul, our spirits, Lord. May we feed upon your word, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So our visitors this morning here at the church, and maybe some of you who are not familiar with me too much, it may not be a surprise to many, but most of you know that at times I've confessed that I find it hard to be patient. And in many sermons, when it comes to the word patience, if there is such a thing in the scriptures being listed, most have heard the comment, oh no, that word, patience. Now that comment may have some of you smiling inside and, and maybe some of us this morning would, we also maybe laugh at the thought of that we can say that we know stuff about patience. I know lots of stuff about patience. I suspect you do too. But most of what I know sometimes is that I don't always display patience when confronted with a problem. More about that in a minute. But first, where does patience come from? It certainly doesn't come from me. That's not its origin. And I almost heard a throat clearing amen from somebody in the congregation. But patience, it comes from God. It's an attribute of God. Kind of a fancy word, attribute. But meaning it's a quality of God. It's part of God. God exercises patience. And because we are created in his image, we should also exercise patience. So, so far, I probably don't have too many fans about this message, but it's one we need to hear. Throughout the Old Testament, we can find where God exercised patience with the people of Israel. If you've read through the Old Testament, which I have, hopefully several times, but when you come across the prophet Nehemiah, he recalls of what he knows of God and, and Israel's relationship with God. In chapter 9 of Nehemiah, he writes, For many years you were patient with them, Israel, and by your spirit you warned them through your prophets. Yet they paid no attention, and you gave them into the hands of neighboring peoples. That began with Nebuchadnezzar, and in Nehemiah's time, it was the Persian Empire that had control over Israel. Nehemiah goes on, he says, but in your great mercy, you did not put, God, did not put an end to them or abandon them, for you are a gracious and merciful God. God was patient with his people. And as sure as I'm standing here, it's proof that God is patient with me. In the New Testament, Peter writes concerning the Lord's anticipated return. 
We've been waiting 2,000 years thereabouts. But he's urging believers then and us now to be patient with God because God is being patient with humanity. In 2 Peter 3, verses 8 and 9, do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. God has created patience. He is patient with us. His patience with us is a sign of his love for us. Our patience with other people are a sign of our love, our concern for them. Have you ever thought how awful it would be for creation, the world, the people around us, how awful it would be for all of that if you or I was God and had the level of patience that you or I have? Did you hear that? Did you understand that? It would not be good. When stuff don't go our way, we lose patience. When things go our way, we seem to do okay. But it doesn't take much for some to lose it in a hurry. Most of you can likely say that you've heard the term, the patience of Job. How many? We've heard it. Yes, the patience of Job. I don't know, have you read Job? I can remember hearing about Job's patience and his patience, and I've read Job, the book of Job, a number of times. I've not really sensed where Job was super patient. Reading through all, it is what seems to be complaining. But if I had happened to me what happened to Job, I'd be doing more than complaining, I'm afraid. Although he had a lot of trouble come on him and his family, he never turned away from God. Sometimes when things fall apart in our lives, what do we do? We get angry at God, maybe. Start questioning God. So in this respect, Job was very patient. In one spot in Job chapter 6, he's talking about his life, his, his thoughts of, at the moment of, of what was going on, and especially when it came to patience. In Job 6, verses 11 to 13, what strength do I have that I should still hope? What prospects that I should be patient? Do I have the strength of a stone? Is my flesh bronze? Do I have any power to help myself? Now that success has been driven from me. We know Job suffered just about total loss. He was ill. He was full of sores. He was abandoned by his friends. He was, he was depressed. All his family had died except for his loving wife, who, by the way, told Job, why don't you just curse God and die? Great support team. He had lost all his wealth, too. I put that at the end. Job, like us, who can't compare our troubles to his, we too will say to ourselves, when, or we'll say to others, when a bunch of stuff has gone wrong in our lives, well, God won't give us any more than we can handle. How many have done said that? Mm -hmm. And right after that, we say, just how much does God think that I can take? Or how strong does God think that I am? When things go wrong, anything it seems, at times we can sense our patience is just running away like a little gazelle as is being chased by a lion. It appears that as Job lost what was dear to him, his family, his livelihood, he didn't see that he had much for friendship in his closest friends. He didn't see that he had that much to be patient about. What does it say about us when we show patience or a lack of patience? Some Proverbs for you. Proverbs 14, 29. Patience. Whoever is patience has great understanding. But one who is quick-tempered displays folly. Folly. We know that term. We wouldn't consider that as a good thing. Folly is sin. When we're not patient, sin is not far away. Proverbs 15, 18. A hot-tempered person stirs up anger, But the one who is patient calms a quarrel. 
We can understand that easily enough. If we can remain silent, patient in a stressful time with someone else, maybe ourselves too, we can often calm a situation down, de-escalate if you like. Proverbs 19.11, a person's wisdom yields patience. It is to one's glory to overlook an offense. And so when we use our wisdom to be patient, maybe to overlook, maybe ignore some harm someone may have caused us. It's not that we can forget about it, but we can choose not to dwell on it. This proverb says that it's to our glory. It shows we're putting our Christian beliefs into practice, which then God receives the glory. When we're confronted with a situation where we could easily lose our patience to defend ourselves or to maintain our reputation, it's better to set aside pride and let patience win the day. The writer of Ecclesiastes says in seven, chapter 7, the end of the matter is better than the beginning. And patience, get this, patience is better than pride. Do not be quickly provoked in your spirit, for anger resides in the lap of fools. Nearly three decades ago, I witnessed firsthand that I was at an annual meeting at a church. Then seemingly out of nowhere, a situation exploded in the church. Something had been brewing, I guess, under the surface. I wasn't a member there, and most of the church didn't know what was going on. But in the meeting, the pastor was called out by the board of deacons, and they stated a bunch of things where they felt that they couldn't support the pastor any longer, and they withdrew their support from the pastor. And at that point, patience, well, on their part, it was nowhere to be seen. These are deacons. These are leaders in the church. What happened next was something I'll never forget. The pastor didn't say one word to defend himself. He simply resigned on the spot. We all went to that meeting together, but we left a divided church with no pastor. The pastor amazed me, and I told him after, I said, I could not have done what you did. I would have fought back. He said it would have made things worse, Mark. So I thought, Mark, listen to him. I need to be patient about his situation. I'm not the victim here. Patience, Mark. Patience. I respected that man before that meeting, but from then on, myself, like 99.9% .9 of the congregation, had the utmost respect and admiration for the way that he handled that difficult situation. As it turns out, the deacons left, maybe younger, and they rehired the pastor. Amen. It's, it ends well. And he became my mentor for the next 10 years. Patience is a virtue, meaning it's the behavior showing high moral standards. Christians, that's you and I, we should display patience in our lives. People are watching. The Lord is watching. It's a prominent and vital way we can witness to others around us, just like that pastor did at that church meeting. God says through the Apostle Paul in Romans 12, be joyful in hope, patient in affliction. Are we having to use patience when everything is going well? No. It'll be during affliction. Patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. So we don't need patience when things are going good. It's always going to be when things are falling apart. The things that are Important to us, when we see money flying out the door, left hand and right, out of control, we can become impatient, stressed, edgy. Maybe like a time bomb that's just ready to go off. You know, this sermon's not all about me. The Apostle Paul also comments what patience is. It's part of what's most important. I shared this Particular, well, this chapter, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, it's, it's about love, and it's often shared in wedding ceremonies. Here's just a portion. Love is patient. Love is kind. It doesn't envy. It doesn't boast. It's not proud. It does not dishonor others. This is speaking about love. 
but it's tied together with these different things. It's not self-seeking. We could say patience is kind, it doesn't envy, it doesn't boast, it's not proud. It's not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. And the apostle says in Galatians 5, as he lists the fruits of the spirit, the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. It's a fruit of the spirit of God. Remember, I said earlier that God is the creator of patience. If you don't think that God is patient with you, you still have a heartbeat. He's patient with us. He's patient with all of creation. He has given us patience as a gift, a fruit of his spirit. Well, I haven't even started talking about the scriptures that I shared at the beginning of the message. Because there's so many other scriptures in the word of God concerning patience. It's good to reflect on those and to chew on those. But if we look at, briefly at Ephesians 4, Paul, he's a prisoner for the Lord. He's in prison. It's not the luxurious conditions of prison that one would find themselves in today. He says, I urge you to live. He's writing to the church. He's writing to us. I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling that you've received. What is this calling? It's a calling to love and to be patient with one another and to share the gospel message. This calling from God to believe in Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of our sins. He says, be completely, not partially, not when things are just going well, but be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort, not sometimes, not when it's convenient, not when you just have time. Make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. For those listening out there in the world, they're not really maybe familiar too much with what goes on in the congregation here. And I'm not preaching on patience today because we've got a bunch of trouble in the congregation. Thought I'd just better add that in there. Boy, things must be bad in the church there. He's Mark's preaching on patience. If we're seeking to live godly lives, we can take it from Paul, the Apostle Paul, someone who's familiar with problems. Even while in prison, he was urging the church, that's us, to use patience, to be humble and gentle, patient, bearing with one another. We can't always get along and agree on 100% of everything all the time. We may get on one another's nerves one another, every now and again. But we need to be able to let little stuff, these personality traits or something that gets under our skin, let that little stuff slide. Don't get too anxious or upset over the small stuff. Paul also tells us to strive to keep the unity in the spirit of God. I think in the congregation here, we do that pretty good, to be at peace with one another. These are, are ways that we can express patience with one another. If we let if we let small stuff divide us, be it in our families or our community or our church, we're not living as God would want us to. And we're not showing the world out there that we're committed to what's really important, which is God, peace, love, patience. Paul tells the church in Thessalonica something similar. He says, Live in peace from chapter 5. Live in peace with one another. And we urge you, brothers and sisters, warn those who are idle or disruptive. Those that have nothing else better to do to stir up stuff. Bear with them. Encourage the disheartened. Help the weak. Be patient with, not just the ones easy to be patient with, be patient with everyone. Make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong, but always strive to do what is good for each other and for everyone else. It seems to me that when our pride is threatened or our nest egg is attacked, when what we have is messed up or we begin to lose it, this is when we begin to lose patience. Could it be? 
could it be that some of the stuff that we hold so dear, if we didn't have it, we wouldn't be so stressed about losing it. I preached on this before, but just a second, you know, we have too much stuff in our lives and we seem to be constantly in protection mode to keep whatever we have, whether it's possessions, position, power, any challenge or threat to these things have us leaving patience at the door. Something to think about or as Elaine would say, food for thought. So again, seeing that we are children of God, Christians, hear this, hear again what the apostle wrote to the church in Colossus. He says, therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourself with these things, compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Forgive. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And he says, and over all these virtues, these good things put on love. It binds them all together. As people see us as professed Christians, seeing that we have differences with others, maybe being threatened, robbed, hurt, whatever it is that has us losing our patience, be it the little stuff that goes wrong in our day, messing up our schedule, frustrating us because it doesn't work, it's broken, you know the deal. These are the times we can shine forth with the love of Christ that dwells in us by showing patience. These last couple of years, of course, with all the heated debates about vaccines and the COVID virus, I've read as you have, and I've heard as you have, many comments coming from believers. Maybe some of you, I'm not here pointing fingers but showed no patience, no tolerance with those of differing opinions. These things we squabble over should not be dividing us as families or community, and especially those as brothers and sisters in Christ. And overall, I do want to say, I think we've done pretty good here. I'm not aware of one drop of blood being shed here. We all know those who don't believe in Christ as Savior, who may not try to live for Christ, who may not be thinking that they have to show patience. We may not expect it from them. But non-believers and other believers, they expect that they should see patience in us as Christians. James chapter 5, starting at verse 7. Be patient then, brothers and sisters. Until the Lord's coming. That doesn't mean that after the Lord comes that we can now be lacking in patience. Be patient until the Lord's coming. And then he gives an example. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop. Patiently waiting for the autumn and the spring rains. You too, he says, be patient and stand firm because the Lord's coming is near. Don't grumble against one another. Because you'll be judged, brothers and sisters. The judge is standing at the door. Brothers and sisters, as an example of patience in the face of suffering, consider the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. As you know, we counted them as blessed, those who have persevered. He even mentions you have heard of Job's perseverance and have seen what the Lord finally brought about for him. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Well, I've often confessed, as I have today, that I can be impatient. Now, a few years ago, it was a challenge. The car, well, the transmission was gone that, the truck brakes were gone, the tractor, that was away for broken bolts. The motorcycle was tore apart in the garage, not working, and the ride on even. Could have drove it. It's a long ways to Bear River. Pretty much everything that we had that operated with gas or diesel, you could not use it to transport yourself. Huh? Oh, the dishwasher. It's a dishwasher, too. Anyway. Thank you, Les, for loaning us the truck for the weekend. Everything was broke down, needing fixing or replacement. Too much stuff. It was frustrating. You can ask Nikki. I wasn't that bad. Shaking my head. 
probably asking how much, what next, Lord? This past week, I faced a few challenges, many of them dealing with breakdowns and needed repairs to stuff. Don't ask, Nikki, how I did with that. But it wasn't that bad. It could have been better, though. I guess this is what inspired the message to speak about patience. It's not in the manuscript, but you know how I've been feeding the deer for a couple of years and we love them. I call them my therapist and we decided to grow a garden this year and we put a fence around an electric fence, four strands. Stuff's coming up. We did have a rabbit go in there. So we put another strand at the bottom to keep the rabbit coming out. And so everything's coming up, starting to blossom and stuff like that. Okay, so there's Nikki. Yep. Amen. Beautiful garden. And I looked out the kitchen window. I was at the sink there a couple days ago, and there's Mama Deer right in the middle of it. Oh, it's funny. Yes. Love those brothers and sisters when they can laugh with you or at you. Yeah. So I went to home hardware and got some more connections and put more wire up. I can't growl at the deer. But still. Anyway, remember, God has given us patience. And we joke and we say, you know, I pray for patience, but God, hurry up. A com comment might sound cute, might be true, but really, in reality, it's not that funny. Remember that patience is one of those fruits of the Spirit. If we have strained relationships, if it's because of our lack of patience or our quick tempers, which has led to maybe even a spirit of, of unforgiveness towards a brother and sister in Christ or a family member, a loved one or a friend. As believers in Jesus Christ, we can't just leave that laying around. It needs to be dealt with. Maybe it's time again to pray to the Lord for patience. But then just don't go forging ahead, continuing on in our lack of patience and still say, well, I'm waiting. Patience. The Lord is patient with us. And as we wait for his return, we're also waiting for answers to prayers. And like Job, let's persevere through the challenges of what we face today and what we'll face tomorrow. Talking with different folks over the last number of, of months, last in the last couple of months, things that are dividing us as, as a country or a society. As believers in Jesus Christ, we need to be careful about what we're doing, about how we think on some of these subjects. Are they the battles that we want to be willing to fall on our sword for, so to speak? Is it really worth arguing about whether you're going to wear a mask or not and getting into confrontation with a friend or a loved one or neighbor? Is it really worth it? Why pick that battle? Wear your mask if you want it. Don't wear the mask if you don't want to. Whatever. Follow the rules. But don't get all hung up on the small stuff. Our job as believers is to share the love of Christ. Our job as believers is not to say, well, because you don't think the way I do, well, then we can't be friends or we can't be cordial to one another. Does that make any sense? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we may all have to confess at times that we're not very good at patience. And when things are going well, we seem to look at patience and smile and be content with saying that I don't have them very often or as much as I should or could. Lord, it is a serious matter. Where how we display and how we act and move about in our, our world. What message are we sending to the world who, who don't recognize you, who doesn't see a need for you? This is a way where we all can witness, Lord, as the world is in trouble, where we all face troubles and trials, sometimes even persecution. We can shine forth and give you glory, bring glory to you, Lord, as others will say, how is it that you can do that? 
how can you be patient and calm under such circumstances? And we can reply that it's because of the Lord our God. Heavenly Father, I, I pray, Lord, that you will use us to be answers to prayers that we pray for others, those in the hospital or in long-term care, those who are mourning loss of loved ones. Use us, Lord, this community of, of believers, friends, neighbors, to be the answers to some of these prayers where we can offer comfort and help to one another. We lift up this prayer in the name of Jesus who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Blessings to each of you and your families near and far on your week. And uh, don't forget, you've got to keep washing your hands.